and I'm going to talk to you about picking the right hiking boots. So your hiking boots are super important and when you're picking them out there's going to be a couple things you want to look for. The first is that you're picking a boot with enough ankle support so you want to make sure it's, it's rising up high. You don't want like a low hiker, you want a high hiker. Uh, number two, when you're trying it on, you should wear like wool socks. You're going to be wearing wool socks when you're hiking, so don't try it on with like super skinny socks. You'll get the wrong size. And number three, you want to get these guys as soon as possible so you can wear them around, break them in, and avoid any blisters on the trail. First thing you need on the gear list is a backpack. And this isn't like a school backpack or the normal backpack you use for your books. Um, it's 50 to 60 liters and it can carry enough of your personal gear and also your group gear. So you're going to be cooking and camping um, for five days. Um, so this pack has a hip belt which is good for carrying weight. It has adjustable straps and you can see it can fit a ton of stuff in it. Ugh. Good morning. I'm going to talk about sleeping bags, sleeping bags, sleeping pads, and stuff sacks. So when you're sleeping in the outdoors, it's super important that you have two things. One, a sleeping bag. This is what you sleep in. It's like a bag for you. What's important about your sleeping bag is that it's both long enough to fit all of you and that it is rated at least 30 degrees. That means uh, the weather can go down to 30 degrees and you will still be totally cool. The second thing is the sleeping pad. So the sleeping pad insulates you from the ground. The ground's where the cold comes from, so the pad steals all that cold and keeps you warm. Uh, a foam pad, an inflatable pad, any kind of pad is fine. Uh, just make sure you have one. And at the end of the day, you're gonna pop this guy right in here to keep it close and constricted. So while you're on trail, it's super important that you stay warm and cotton doesn't keep you so while we're in the backcountry, it's really important that we wear synthetic. This can be polyester or another material as long as it's not cotton and won't stay wet. So this is a great example of a synthetic shirt that you could wear on trail. And this is a good example of some shorts. Um, you could find these things at like REI or EMS, but you can also find them at like Target. Just make sure that they're not cotton and that they won't stay wet. The importance of rain gear is really about prevention. In the backcountry, when you get wet, it's really, really hard to get dry. And also, when you're wet, you get cold. And when you're cold, it's really hard to get warm. So rain gear is probably one of the most important things you're going to bring on trail. Rain bottoms, especially very important. And you can get any kind of rain jacket as well, which can serve as your wind shell. And you can find this at Goodwill, or most clothing stores, or outdoor stores, etc. Whoa, I'm pretty chilly out here. But for real, when you're on trail, it gets really, really cold. And on nights where it's really cold, it's awesome to have some wool or fleece gloves and a hat. Make sure that it's not cotton, uh, and you can get these wherever any store usually would have them. probably guess that it is not good to be cold when you're in the backcountry. So that this is why it's important to have fleece top and bottoms. So this is what a fleece top would look like. Um, it's made out of like fleece material. Um, and fleece pants can look like a lot of different things. They can be like pajama fleece pants, um, they can be like fleece track pants, or they can be this exact same material. It gets a lot colder than you think it'll get, and at nights it'll probably feel like a really, really chilly fall night. So it's important that we have these fleece layers even if you think it's going to be summer weather, because it gets much colder in the night than you think it will. So it's really important that you have wool or synthetic socks while you're on trail because again cotton gets wet and then it stays wet and then it makes you cold and when you're cold that's bad because it's really hard to get warm so these are a great example of some wool socks you can get them pretty much wherever um, these look nice and comfy and pretty stylish if you ask me uh, so definitely make sure to come with the appropriate amount of wool socks
the last kind of layer you'll need is a long underwear top and bottom layer. So long underwear is important to keep your heat in and you usually wear it underneath your other clothes and you can take it off as it gets hotter in the day. So this is a long underwear shirt um, and the pants would usually look like a kind of leggings or tighter fitting pants. It's really important that while you're on trail you have some camp shoes like Tevas or Crocs or something else, whatever you like, as long as they have backs. It's really important that you never ever go barefoot, but it's also really nice after a long day of hiking or canoeing or whatever to be able to change out of your hiking boots. Um, and at some campsites you'll have some little wet areas to splash around in and it's no fun to do that in hiking boots. In the backcountry, there's lots of trees, which means that the sun is shaded from where you're going to be, which means that it gets dark really fast. And it's really hard to shuffle around your things when there's literally no light, and so what's most helpful is having a headlamp. Okay, one of the most important things that you're bringing on your trip are two Nalgene's at least um, that each hold a bleeder, and this is really important, obviously, because we have to stay hydrated, but especially when you're being active. So the reason why we have these two um, large bottles is that water needs to be purified a lot of times when we use it on trail, um, and so you can do that in these containers. You also can bring a camelback if you've used one before, um, but if you've never used one before, don't get a camelback, just stick with the water bottles. And also, you still need to bring two even if you do have a camelback. Hydration for tomorrow starts today. Other things you'll need that aren't pictured include a cup, a bowl, spoon, sunscreen, and bug spray.